Good afternoon. Thanks again to everyone for being here for this exciting day. I'm honored to announce the introduction of Bill 7, the Alberta Human Rights Amendment Act 2015. It amends the Alberta Human Rights Act by adding gender identity and gender expression as expressly prohibited grounds of discrimination. Our government is committed to standing up for all Albertans. The proposed changes will ensure will ensure trans and gender variant Albertans are treated with the dignity and respect that they deserve. Our province's diversity, equality, and spirit of inclusiveness have made this a great place to live, to work, and to raise a family. However, we know that the trans and gender variant members of the community continue to be a highly marginalized group within society. This distressing reality is contrary to these collective values. This legislation, which coincides with Anti-Bullying Week in Alberta, is one way we can help to address this issue and to break down the barriers and stereotypical myths. During consultation with members of the trans and gender variant community, I heard several stories of discrimination. Difficulties finding a job, difficulties maintaining employment, or even being accepted into a workplace. We heard stories of safety concerns in shelters and difficulty obtaining proper medical assistance. No Albertan should have to face, face these problems because of their gender identity or expression. This amendment will ensure that these existing rights are specifically reflected in the legislation. The Alberta Human Rights Commission which accepts complaints of discrimination against trans and gender variant individuals under the prohibited ground of gender discrimination supports this move. No Albertan should be denied basic services for being true to themselves. This change will increase access to justice and make it clear that discrimination on the basis of gender identity and gender expression is against the law. This legislative amendment reflects our commitment to all Albertans to ensure that they are entitled to equal protections under the law. We are committed to ensuring that all Albertans feel welcome in this province and feel welcome in this legislature. We are excited to make these changes to support trans and gender variant Albertans. We know it will make a difference in their daily lives. Thank you very much. All right, next we have Aria Aaron. And for media, who would like the spelling of her name? It's A-R-I-A, -A, last name spelled E-H-R-E-N. Thank you. I'm honored to have been invited by the ministry to speak to you all today alongside so many of my activist peers who work hard every day to make this province a better place for transgender individuals. I know I'm far from the only trans person in this province feeling a little more optimistic about the world today. I couldn't be prouder of our government and our Minister of Justice, MLA in Calgary, Buffalo, Kathleen Ganley, for following through on her commitment to the trans community. She informed me recently that this promise to me was her first campaign promise, and I'm overjoyed to see it fulfilled. For those of us who at some point in our lives realize we must transition or publicly express our identities, we come to terms with the fact that the world is often not prepared to let us do so easily or peacefully. Transgender children and their parents face this. Transgender adults and their families face this. There is an overwhelming feeling at times that our existence is an inconvenient fact that the world would rather not face. And we so often see this in the treatment we receive, where we have been discriminated against, mistreated, shut out, denied, ostracized, fired, threatened. There has been little to no recourse because the institutions we would go to for support and for justice are rarely any better informed or mannered. This must improve. This bill is timely. As tomorrow is Transgender Day of Remembrance, a day when we memorialize transgender people who have lost their lives as a direct result of transgender violence. Some ceremonies this year have also chosen to memorialize those transgender people who have committed suicide in the past year. The stories of trans suicide we are aware of through the community and the media, the rare cases where public notes were left, and the thoughts each of us has contemplated in our darkest moments leave little doubt in my mind as to the cause. 
When we cannot see ourselves in the world, persisting becomes an ordeal. This is one of many reasons why having gender identity and expression in the Human Rights Act is critical. Seeing ourselves in the world will help save our lives. Explicit enumeration doesn't just ensure that we're not kept hidden in the eyes of the law, but our laws are an expression of the values our society holds dear. To be reflected in the law is to be reflected in Albertan values. The passing of this bill will send a clear message to all Albertans that trans people belong in this province and that anti-transgender discrimination will not be tolerated by the justice system. I'm also confident it will lead the way to other much needed legal, medical, and educational support for transgender Albertans. Thank you. Thank you, Aria. Next, we have Angela Reed. Angela's name for media is spelled A-N-G-E-L-A-R-E-I-D. Hi, everybody, and thanks uh, very much for the welcome to the legislature today. I'd like to start by acknowledging that we're on uh, Treaty 6 land and also to thank Arya Aaron for uh, spearheading contact with Minister Ganley even before she came, became a member of the Trans Equality Society of Alberta. Uh, rights are of little use if they are not communicated. An oppressor may act in ways that they consider morally just and those wronged may feel they have little recourse. Trans persons I've spoken with are frequently under the impression that their rights are not protected Many have been fired shortly after coming out at their workplace or have been made to use facilities based on what other people say they are. Trans and gender diverse individuals rarely have the resources to mount a response after suffering such discriminations. It's Tessa's hope that enumeration of gender identity and gender expression in the Alberta Human Rights Act alters this inequality so that the discriminatory acts are uh, discouraged in the first place. Many have argued at the federal, provincial, and even school board level that such enumeration is redundant, that existing legislation and policies protect everyone. We'd like to remind them that women in Canada weren't persons until 1929, and would note that no one making this argument has proposed removing sex, disability, religion, or any of the other enumerated grounds from, the human, rights, from human rights legislation. While there are more trans celebrities than ever before, and they have a role to play in prompting conversation, much of the recent progress on trans rights in Alberta has come from the relatively anonymous struggles of people working to overcome challenges in their participation in society. We had mass human rights filings uh, when sex reassignment surgery was delisted in 2009, a collection of trans persons who worked with a lawyer who was working pro bono um, to press for updated policy on name change publications in the Alberta Gazette. The landmark case of CF versus Alberta, which granted us the ability to change birth certificates, uh, birth certificate gender markers in particular, uh, without medical intervention. And of course, the current struggles of a young trans girl in the Edmonton Catholic School Board system, whose case has prompted the Minister of Education to call for all Alberta school boards to create standalone policies. Tessa would like to acknowledge uh, these people for their efforts and that of their allies. While recognizing there's still a big gap between having rights and being able to access them, Bill 7 marks a great step forward and Tessa remains committed to working with community members, legislators and other stakeholders to make these rights effective in practice and not just on paper, lest we remain stuck in the current environment of rights without remedy. In closing, as it's the day before the Trans Day of Remembrance, our thoughts are with those who have lost a loved one by whatever means who are trans or gender diverse. And to the parents of trans children, the support you show your child is one of the greatest deterrents of suicide. Thank you for standing by them. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. And Mickey Wilson is our last speaker. M-I-C-K-E-Y-W-I-L-S-O-N. Thank you for having me here. On behalf of myself personally and the board and staff of the Pride Centre of Edmonton, I want to express my thanks to all members of the government of Alberta today, and in particular, Minister Ganley and her staff for listening to trans Albertans, for hearing our stories, acknowledging not only the importance of implicit protection, but also our value and, our, and the significance in naming our lives and our identities. This is a very exciting moment for all of us, but I would say it is especially exciting for some of us who have been working in this area for a very long time. It was 10 years ago this year that I and other trans people from across Canada met in Ottawa trying to add gender identity and gender expression to the Canadian Human Rights Act. 
In all of my dreams, I never, ever imagined that the Alberta Human Rights Act would be amended first. <laughs> the act of including gender identity and gender expression as protected grounds indicates a recognition of the very specific challenges that we in the trans and gender variant community face. With this in place, it will be crystal clear to everyone, including us, that gender diverse people cannot be discriminated against for their gender identity or their gender expression. In closing, I want to say thank you to an amazing community of trans and gender variant and creative people whose living and working have endured to bring us to this moment. And even more on the eve of the Transgender Day of Remembrance, I want to thank those who are with us only in spirit today. So many lives have been lost, and it is their stories of courage that we stand on today so that someday all will know in Alberta where every single person is valued and respected. And you know what? It's a great day for human rights in Alberta. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mickey. Uh, we'll open the floor to questions for anyone you've heard from, anyone standing here, Minister Ganley. Just building on those comments, so is Alberta the only province then, or where are we in terms of, compared with other provinces on this? Um, we're ahead of some and behind others, I would guess, um, in terms of uh, making these particular amendments. Does anyone else there know which other provinces were first? I think BC. Mm -hmm. uh, BC, Ontario, Northwest Territories. There we go. And uh, Maritime, and APEC Maritime Province. Actually, if I can, be new for if I can interrupt. Um, Tessa Online. Uh, dot org, T S A online dot org. Um, if you go into the resources, there's a page about human rights across Canada that lists and links to all of the legislation for this across Canada for provinces and territories. By this move, Alberta will become the fourth jurisdiction that will protect both gender identity and gender expression. There are other provinces that state and territories that only state gender identity. And then there's some provinces like Alberta once was before the Bill of Rights was changed this spring, where the protection was through interpretation with no explicit reference. So some places explicit, some places not explicit. And all of those are listed, excepting today's update, um, on that page, if you'd like to look at that as a reference. Can somebody speak to the difference between gender identity and gender expression and why it was important to have them both in there? Um, gender identity is a reference to someone's internal feeling of what their gender is, uh, whereas gender expression refers to um, how that's expressed, so uh, grooming, mannerisms, that sort of thing. You said this, uh, this was your first campaign promise? Uh, <laughs> Uh, this is one of my very first, I got an email on this issue um, uh, when, I was, when I was running for office, actually, and uh, it was one of the very first responses I made, and I said, yes, absolutely, I will advocate for this. Of course, uh, this was at the very beginning of the election campaign, so at that time I had hoped that at best I might advocate from opposition. So uh, it's, it's really incredibly exciting for me uh, to have seen the Democratic process take us to this place and um, and not just this place but this place where when this bill was introduced in the house today uh, all members on both sides of the aisle uh, rose to to applaud these changes why, why is it that core to you then why is it so fundamentally important to you well I mean I think it's fundamentally important in the sense that it's a real expression of Albertans and our values and our values are that everyone deserves equal protection under the law uh, and I think that's absolutely critical, and it's such an honor to be able to uh, come forward and to say that today. And I think it's um, it's really amazing to see uh, how far we've come that that everyone together on both sides of the house uh, was able to do this. And for for me, it's uh, a very interesting um, comment, I guess, on the political process to which I am I'm fairly new. The the one of the the, the first things I said that I would advocate for is now something that this, this government has done. So it's very exciting. Do we have any questions on the line, operator? Good question from Doug Newman from the St. Albert Gazette. Your line is now open. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, so thank you for the question. Uh, it's uh, Jan Booterman. Uh, obviously, a, a long protracted uh, kind of battle on this front with respect to a teaching position in St. Albert here. And I was just hoping to find out uh, from you, do you feel like having this change now made to the legislation or, or pending to the legislation, is this going to make a difference in terms of, of the kind of struggle that you had to go through? Uh, yeah, I would hope so. I think for all trans people, 
um, knowing that we are in fact covered because there is language that directly connects to um, the, the legal language around trans will make it much easier to be able to say, no, see, look, really, I am protected um, versus when I lost my job for being trans. Um, I lost that at a time when such words were not explicitly embedded in the Alberta Human Rights Act. And in fact, at that time, even sexual orientation was still being read in to the Alberta Human Rights Act, despite the fact that the Supreme Court of Canada had 10 some years earlier already said Alberta had to have that. So, you know, that difference between knowing something because you can point to it in writing versus knowing something because you learn enough legal knowledge to figure out that you're protected, um, doubtlessly will be of great benefit both for trans people and the, the people around us, our employers, our families, our friends. We should never have had to even have this discussion. I would love to see that we could just say everybody be nice to everyone and that's really what our constitution says. But as we've learned over the decades, um, Sometimes we have to be a little bit more ex ex explicit and specific in enumerating rights for groups that are obviously not being accorded those rights just by virtue of someone else not understanding what the word everyone means. Do we have any more questions, operator, on the line? Not at this time. Any more from the floor? Great. Thank you all so much for being here. We appreciate your time.